Hi grade 11, so we are back to analytical geometry and um, this is topic 2 which is also a revision from grade 10. There's nothing new we're going to learn here but um, really important topics and so we're going to write notes as we go along as we learn a couple of important things. So this topic is around gradients and something we should be familiar with because we've done it in function is that functions is that the gradient of any straight line is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now it doesn't actually matter which coordinate you call, coordinate 1 or coordinate 2, as long as you always put the 1 coordinate first. So that must be 1 coordinate and this must be one of the other coordinates. So let's start off with some easy examples and work our way towards more difficult. So example 1 says if A and B are two points, determine the gradient of AB. So perfect, this formula is given to you on the formula sheet you don't actually have to show the formula you can go straight to substitution so 9 take away 3 so 9 take away 3 which means I have to go 5 take away 2 again you don't have to bother to show me any more working you are welcome to now I should be saying a b in my super and uh, my subscript just so that I can keep track of what I'm working out and um, you don't have to show me any working you can just say the answer is 2 so you can just plug it into your calculator and get the answer Great, so now let's look at our next question which says if C and D are these two points, are A, B, the line A, B, and is the line A, B and C, D parallel to each other? It would be a better way to say it. So first important note which we need to make on the side here is that parallel lines have the same gradient. Really important um, concept and this should be something that we kind of know from grade 9 even. So parallel lines have the same gradient. Really, really important. So, do are these lines parallel? Well, I'm not sure. I first need to find the gradient of CD, which is 10 take away 2, all over 9 take away 5, which is 8 divided by 4, which, what do you know, is 2. Now, if they ask you to show that they're parallel or are they parallel, you shouldn't just say, therefore, yes. You need to, therefore, make a conclusion. You're making an argument. So you need to say, great, the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of CD. Therefore, AB is parallel to CD. So with all these, we're going to be doing a lot of these, prove this, are these, this, show that, all those types of questions. And you must make sure that you don't just make a conclusion. You've got to show an argument towards that conclusion. Right, on to example three. If A, B, C, and D are given to you, prove, so here's another one, prove that my lines are perpendicular. So here's our second important note about gradients. If uh, lines are perpendicular, if lines are perpendicular, well first of all what does the word perpendicular mean? Perpendicular means they're at 90 degrees to each other, then the gradient of the one times the gradient of the other always gives you negative 1. So if lines are perpendicular, the gradients will multiply together to give you negative 1. So if we're trying to prove that they're perpendicular, we need to show that this is true. So we need to show, we cannot assume that it's true because we're proving that they're perpendicular. So we are going to try and show that the gradient of AB times the gradient of CD equals negative 1. So we actually have to show that. So let's start out by actually finding the gradient of AB. So the gradient of AB is change in y. Now don't forget, most people do change in x over change in y just out of habit of putting x first. So it's change in y. So it's 1 minus minus 5, which I could write as 1 plus 5 if I wanted, over minus 2 minus minus 3. Again, we don't show any working, we just plug that into a calculator, and the answer is 6. Now I'm going to work out the gradient, and this is where it's really useful to use the subscript, because otherwise you don't know what gradient you're working with. So it's change in y, which is 6 minus 7. We'll have a change in x, which is 4 minus minus 2. Again, you don't have to use the cal you don't have to show me more working, you just use a calculator. So I get negative 1 over 6. Now because the question said prove, you can't just suddenly go, therefore, they're perpendicular. You have to then show me that, therefore, the gradient of AB multiplied by the gradient of CD is equal to 6 multiplied by negative 1, 6, which, what do you know, is negative 1. Therefore, AB is perpendicular 
to CD. So this purple bit here is really, really important that we lay it out like that. If you're trying to prove they're perpendicular, you actually have to go about showing that the gradients multiply together to give you negative 1. And the most important part here is this. You shouldn't just say, therefore the gradients multiply together to give you negative 1. You should show me what you're multiplying. Great, so let's move on and work again with this idea of perpendicular lines. This question says a line is perpendicular. So you're not proving they're perpendicular or finding out if they are. You're told they're perpendicular. So it's perpendicular to y equals 3x minus 4. Now really importantly, that means that the gradient of this line is 3. So therefore, the gradient of the perpendicular line, now that's the symbol for perpendicular, now you can go about solving for this, or you can use a little bit of a trick. And the trick is this. If you are, it's not really a trick, it's just a kind of shortcut really. If you know the one gradient, the gradient of the perpendicular line will be swap the gradient around, so flip it, and change the sign. So swap the gradient around and change the sign. So what do I mean by this? What I mean is 3 over here, technically that's 3 over 1. So to find the perpendicular gradient, I'm going to flip this around, so I'm going to get 1 over 3, and I'm going to change the sign. So this was positive, so now it's negative. Now why? Why, if I just write it on the sign here, because 3 multiplied by something is going to have to give me negative 1 because these lines are told to you that they're perpendicular. So first of all, this has to have an opposite sign because opposite signs multiply together to give you a negative. So if you had a negative, you'd have to be multiplying by a positive. Here we have a positive, so we have to be multiplying by a negative. And then you need to cancel 2, 1. So you need an over 3 so that these cancel. And if this is over 1, you need an one at the top so they can cancel. So basically you need everything to cancel. So you need the switch you need the swapped around version of this gradient. So that's kind of like the logic behind this little bit of a shortcut. So you flip the gradient over around and you change the sign. So if you told that the line is perpendicular, that means you are allowed to assume that its gradient will follow this pattern. So we now know the gradient of this line. So therefore I know that the line I'm looking for is negative third x plus c. Now I'm told that it passes through 2, 5. Now that's perfect because if I have a point on the graph I'm now going to sub in 2, 5. So I'm going to say 5, careful y first, is negative 1 third multiplied by 2 plus c. Now this isn't particularly pretty but no one said now it's had to be pretty. So this is negative 2 thirds, remember top times top, plus c. So I would add 2 thirds to both sides, and either you get 5 and 2 thirds equals c, or you could write this as an improper fraction, which is 17 over 3. I prefer improper fractions myself. Either way, I now know my equation is negative 1 third x plus 17 over 3, or 5 and 2 thirds. Great, so just really important here, I didn't have to show they were perpendicular, I was told they were perpendicular. So I was allowed to assume that the gradients would multiply together to give me minus 1, which allowed me to use my trick. Alright, let's look at the next one. Determine the equation of the line perpendicular, so you're told it's perpendicular, to 3y equals x plus 9, and it has the same y-intercept. Now really importantly, this is not in standard form. So let me write that again. This is not in standard form. So I cannot look at this form at the moment and say, oh my word, here's the gradient and here's the wind set. I don't know yet. So my first port of call is to say, right, I need to write this in standard form. And standard form means getting y by itself. So I'm going to divide everything by 3 and y will equal to x over 3 plus 3. Now that means that my gradient in this case is 1 third. 
there's an invisible one there if I need to think of it so this gradient is one third so therefore my perpendicular line will have a gradient of flip the gradient around which will make it 3 over 1 which I would write as 3 and change the sign now why am I allowed to just assume that and I don't have to show anything because they told me it was perpendicular I wasn't trying to prove it's perpendicular I was told that it was so therefore my line is now negative 3x plus c so hopefully I have a point on this graph and then I can sub it in now in this example I have even better apparently this line has the same y-intercept now how do you tell a y-intercept in a straight line y equals mx plus c c is the y-intercept so I now know that c is 3 so my final answer is negative 3x plus c okay on to our next one which is teaching us something different now this question is designed to teach us the word collinear so this question says determine b if a b and c are collinear now this means on the same straight line co meaning together linear means straight line so on the same straight line so basically if I draw myself a little picture of this quickly not that you have to in a test but just for our notes negative uh, 2 negative 2 will be somewhere around there which is 2 negative 2 1 1 would be somewhere like I don't know there nothing, nothing has to be particularly accurate and 7 would be somewhere down here so a y value of 7 oh sorry y value of 7 would be somewhere up there and basically this looks terrible but basically they're saying that so I should probably draw it up there maybe let me erase that they're on the same straight line so let me draw this a bit better this is the point B which is 1 1 and this is the point C which is B 7 and these are apparently on the same straight line so there's multiple ways to do this question I prefer the method of saying great if you're on the same straight line the gradient from B to A must be exactly the same as the gradient from C to B because you're on the same straight line now parallel lines also have the same gradient but this these two gradients have a point in common so you can't have the same gradient and hit the same point unless you're on the same straight line so personally I prefer to do collinear questions by saying great the gradient from A to B which I can work out has to be equal to the gradient from C to B now we'll show you a different way in a moment but I prefer this way so what's the gradient from A to B I always work out what I can work out for it first A to B is change in Y so Y minus Y over X minus X and I get negative 3 so this gradient is negative 3 so therefore the gradient from C to B is also negative 3 so that means negative 3 would be equal to now change in Y so 7 minus 1 over B minus 1 now this is just an equation really so I'm going to multiply this side by B minus 1 so that they can cancel as long as I multiply this side by B minus 1 so what I land up getting here is negative 3 times B minus 1 equals 7 minus 1 which is 6 now lots of ways to continue but you probably would be most comfortable with multiplying out equals 6 now I would subtract 3 on both sides and get 3 and then divide by negative 3 so get negative 1 and that does kind of look plausible with my picture even though I wasn't drawing to scale so collinear most importantly means on the same straight line and therefore one of the methods to do it is to say well your gradients between any two points must be equal so let me write that as a note the gradient between any two points must be equal so in this case I could have actually also said that the gradient from C down to a must also be minus 3 and I'd get the same answer now the other way to possibly do this which I don't ever do myself but lots of people prefer is actually to find the equation of the straight line so if I really know the gradient from a to b is negative 3 because I'd worked it out 
I could actually find the equation of the straight line through A and B by substituting in a point. So if I subbed in B, B is the point 1, 1, which means I'd get 1 equals negative 3 plus C. And if I added 3 to both sides, I'd get 4 is equal to C. So therefore, the equation of this straight line is negative 3x plus 4. Now, how does that help me? Well, basically, I now work on the concept of the fact that this point of C is a point on the straight line. So if I go and substitute in 7, I can work backwards to B, because B7 is a point on the straight line. So basically, I would minus 4 from both sides, and then I'd divide by negative 3, and I'd get negative 1. So you get exactly the same idea. So this is the second option. Let me just write a note if you prefer this one. So this one is you basically determine the equation of the straight line, and then you substitute in the point to work backwards. And obviously, to determine the equation of the straight line, you would always be work with, you would always be working with um, the two points that you know. So then, this part here is sub in, and this was point C to work backwards. That doesn't sell, doesn't say backwards. Let's start again to work backwards to B. So base uh, these both work, and they'll both always work. So maybe just always pick a method that you feel more comfortable with. Maybe you just sometimes you actually like both, and then on the day you pick one which makes more sense to you. Okay, our last question on gradients, and then we've pretty much done them all, is this. Determine k if these gradients are perpendicular. So these two lines are perpendicular, which means I know that the gradient from a to b multiplied by the gradient from c to d must equal minus 1 because I was told they were perpendicular. Now what can I work out? I can work out the gradient from A to B. So let me go and do that. The gradient from A to B is equal to change in Y, so minus 3 minus minus 7, or I could just say plus 7, over 3 minus 6. So minus 3 plus 7 is 4, 4 over negative 3. So I basically get negative 4 over 3. Now what I could do is I find it easiest to therefore use my trick. I don't like to use this particular equation because then it's multiplying and it's confusing to me. So what I prefer to do is I prefer to then use my trick to work out what the gradient from C to D is. And what's the trick? The trick is swap them around, so 3 over 4, and change the sign. So plus now y, because have a look, wouldn't you agree that negative 4 over 3 times positive 3 over 4, the 3's would cancel, the 4's would cancel, and I'd get negative 1. So I've used the trick to get the, the gradient of CD. Now how does that work for me? I can now work backwards. So now 3 over 4, which is the gradient from C to D, must be k minus 3 over negative 5 minus minus 1. So now just a bit of solving an equation really. So this is k minus 3 over negative 5 plus 1 which is negative 4. I would multiply by negative 4 on both sides um, basically to get rid of that denominator and interestingly enough that means the 4's cancel. So it doesn't really matter how you do that side but the 4's cancel and this side becomes negative 3 equals k minus 3 and I add 3 to both sides, and I get k is 0. So it doesn't really matter um, if you try and use the multiply together to give you minus 1. You'll get the same answer. I just find that a much more difficult equation to work with. So if I'm told they're perpendicular, I prefer to find the gradients I can, use the trick. So there's my trick. I shouldn't call it a trick. I should call it a shortcut because it's not a trick. It has logic to it. So I use my shortcut to find the other gradients and then I work backwards. Great. So that's pretty much revision of gradients, which means that we've pretty much revised all the formulas that we've done in grade 10. We're still going to do a couple of revision um, exercises and a couple of revision videos before we start the grade 11 stuff, but that's pretty much all the basics that we need to know. Well done.